Hello, everyone. Welcome to the very first episode of the No Limit Wrestling Show. I am Dylan Murray and joined by Xavi. Please introduce yourself. I'm Xavi. Um, I don't know how we tricked Scott into give us, giving us our own audio series uh, on the Five Star Network, but we are the greatest gr- gif- grifters alive. So, I mean, worked out. Also, yeah. want to also I just also want to put it out there this show name was not my idea. I wanted to be Broetto Coaster, but you know that's whatever. We don't like money ideas around here, so it's cool. Broetto Coaster is a good name, but yeah. See, bro, no, the thing was was that Bro reminded me too much of Matt Riddle, and we can't have that. Ah, that's bro. fair. That's fair. like I don't know, like like you can't you can't be synonymous with the word Bro and pro wrestling no more. It doesn't really, uh, you know. Matt Riddle kinda... is non canon. He's not real. <laughs> Well, yeah, can we just pretend that he doesn't exist? No, I mean, he's not canon. I don't know. I don't know how much of WWE you've been watching, but he's been tagging with Kevin and Sammy, and that they just sucks. pretend he, he's pretend they just pretend that he's not there most of the time. There's like, yeah, he's listen not top. <laughs> listen, top five wrestlers in WWE right now are Gunther, yes, Sammy Zayn, Kevin yes. Owens, yeah. Dominic Mysterio, the Base God, and Omos. So, I mean, no, outside yeah, of right. those, outside of those five, I don't, I you're, don't you're care. missing you're missing main event Jey Uso, but. Uh, you know, main event <laughs> Jey Uso. Main event Jey Uso. He's a little um, bitch. What, what you know? What you know about main event Jey Uso? No, um, so he should have been on this I show that probably, we're about to talk about. I should probably start like introing the show. Uh, yeah, this is the first episode. Obviously, we're already off the rails. Uh, it's No Limit Wrestling Show. As Avi said, we went through a lot of names. I decided on No Limit Wrestling Show because. Uh, I needed to butter his AV up. He was getting very upset with me for not designing on a name. And No Limit is his favorite tag team of all time, I think. I it imagine. was like a day and a half, bro. Y'all don't understand. He was. <laughs> no, I wasn't the only one getting mad. Scott was getting pissed. He was like, bro, pick Scott a was fucking name. Very upset. <laughs> uh, but the reason it's called the No Limit Wrestling Show is that basically it's like a wrestling book club where we're going to have guests down the line mm-hmm. and they're going to bring whatever wrestling product they want to the show. Mm-hmm. We will all watch it. We will all review it. Um, and by any wrestling product, I mean pretty much anything. Um, we already have the chaperone lined up sometime sometime down the line. Um, <laughs> chaperone, hell the yeah. Chaperone, yeah. <laughs> we watching that. Um, oh. Today, today I thought I'd do a little bit of a tie-in um, since all together again is happening pretty soon. Mm-hmm. Um, I think this week is is when it's happening. We went back and watched the first all together. We watched all together 2011. This is my idea. Uh, the next episode will be Xavi's suggestion, and then after that, we plan on getting some guests on. Um, yeah, I, I haven't seen a ton from this era of like Puro, especially male Puro. I've watched a lot of Joshi from all over the place, but this is kind of like a dark spot for me um, when it comes to the the men's side of stuff. So I was really interested in seeing all of the uh, you know all of the <laughs> young boys that turned out to be top stars uh especially in that in that rumble that we'll talk about a little bit later um, fuck that man <laughs> no nah, you're a piece of shit already man yeah, he, i'm gonna kill you <laughs> he's not happy this was a five-hour show uh this was a five-hour show but you know we'll, we'll talk about how we thought about it a little bit later on so scott so oh, so ahead. scott originally thought that we were doing a watch along and i was like there's no <laughs> fucking way there's just no way we no. would kill each other i was we would like kill each other if we have to sit there no, we had just to sit there for five hours. If I sat there for five hours watching the show, I would have destroyed Dylan because this was his idea, and I would have been so angry. <laughs> but also, also, both but members so, of No Limit is is on the show, so it's a good tie-in. Yeah, they're good in the tie-in same with the name. They're, they're in the same match, and I probably should have just watched that match and like nothing else. But <laughs> you been leaving, leaving me hanging, brother. Uh, Not, I mean, there was some good stuff on here. It was, you know. Um, for the most part, it's like what you expect from those, uh, you know, those collab shows where there's a lot of tags and, you know, you can kind of pick out who's going to eat the fall in each match, so on and so forth. But um, for the most part, I thought it was more fun than I was expecting it to be, because when I was looking at the court, I was like, not only is it a lot of tags, there's a lot of fucking people in these tags. They're like gigantic tag matches. There's like a like. The high profile matches are like two on two and three on three, but most of them there's like four on fours and shit. And I'm just like, man, can we just like not? Um, but uh the format we're kind of rocking with, uh, this was all Dylan's idea. I'll give him his credit to make up for what we're gonna have to talk about. Um, what we're gonna do before we begin the review for each of the shows that is brought to us, um we're basically gonna give our thoughts before the show about you know our predictions for match of the night worst match of the night all that good jazz 
Uh, we're going to give, you know, the card rundown and, you know, we're, we're going to talk about it. We're going to review it. And then after the show, we'll give you our definitive match of the night, worst match of the night, our show rating and overall takeaway from the show. Uh, for show rating, I think we should do, uh, do you want to do the cage match style with the numbers or do you want to do like letter grades? Um, I think we could do, let's, let's do numbers. Let's do, let's do one out of 10. Okay. Let's do one out of 10. Um, before before we get into all that, I thought you know I should uh, give a little bit of background on what the show actually is. Yeah. So altogether, for those who don't know, altogether 2011 was a tri promoted super show featuring New Japan, All Japan, and NOAA. It was from August 27th in Nippon Budokan. This was after the Toku, I believe is how you pronounce it, the Toku disaster, which was a yeah. earthquake tsunami that happened in 2011, completely uh, destroyed an entire uh, section of Japan basically, mm-hmm. and it was it was really just really a disaster so they all came together in an all together uh, get it um yeah. to i believe this was all uh for charity for the red cross i think was, uh, I believe was, so. was where they were sending the money for yeah. this so yeah huge card um these three companies at this time weren't all like the most friendly um so this was actually mm-hmm. a pretty big deal um it's not like you would see this every every other week like for all together now it's like you know noah and and New Japan have been working together the past couple of years to some yeah. degree. Everybody's um, friendly, and, although yeah. you know, you know, New Japan's gone politic their way on top all the time. But yeah, I mean, everybody's like friendlier than say they would be, you know, pro- like years prior. So I mean, yeah, exactly. Uh, so, this time around, uh, when they do it again, it's also going to be for charity. But uh, there was like an actual definitive reason for them doing this first one. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I, this is actually. Uh, fun trivia for all y'all that follow me on Twitter. This is very, very soon after uh, No Limit uh, disbands and yes. I was kicked out of chaos because they had uh, a di- the uh, New Japan diaries on the uh, New Japan Japanese website. They had one of those together. Uh, and basically the original idea, what, what Yujiro thought was he would tell Naito what he wanted him to write and he would just do everything. And then like two <laughs> diaries in, Naito would just not stop talking about Mexico. So he said, all right, let me come on in here and fix this. <laughs> um, and then he said, all right, for my first one, I want to talk about Mexico. And I was like, God damn it. <laughs> um, but uh, basically, uh, one of the like very last diaries they did was them saying there would be no diary and they were sending their thoughts to the people affected by this. So this is like very soon after that. Yeah, yeah. Um, I'm excited to talk about that whole match with No Limit because it was, well, it wasn't like the greatest match. It had a lot of uh, heavy hitters and it was just an interesting match to look back on yeah we had um, some uh, we had a few people in here i was like man this is a crazy group of people man. man no that's what i mean the battle royal for as bad as it was i i need to talk about some of those some of those names man um but first let's get to the predictions i have uh, a couple overall like good predictions yeah. overall bad predictions um from before i watched the show uh, yeah that's what have, i did too uh, i out? yeah i have my prediction for match of the night and worst match of the night that's what i have okay um yeah, so I I have you know a bit more free form, I guess. I saw it as before the show. I was like, okay, there's two big junior matches, the big tag matches. Um, either of those could be my match of the night. That's how I kind of uh-huh. saw it because I was like, you know, big junior guy. You're also a big junior guy, so uh-huh. that's what I saw. And also Akiyama and Sasuke versus No Fear sounded like it'd be insane. So th- those were the two matches that I pointed out as like, oh, these are probably going to be really good. Uh, what did you see as what you? Yeah. yeah, so for my predicted match of the night, I had Akiyama and Sasaki versus No Fear, uh, just because, I mean, I was looking at that match, I was like, that match has to be good. Like, if anything yeah. else on this <laughs> card's bad, cool, but, like, this, there's no way this sucks. <laughs> like, I don't care how slowed down Takeyama was starting to get at this point. Takeyama still ruled up and, up, up until, like, you know, his uh, little accident that he had. Uh, he always ruled and i was like akiyama's gonna be fire and sasaki uh, although we're getting closer and closer toward the end of his career he's still gonna throw bombs and to is cool i was like there's no way this match is gonna be bad so that was my predicted match of the night i'll go ahead and uh tell you what i thought my worst match of the night was going to be i said this to sure cup battle royal is going to suck because battle royals are not good and I was um, shocked because, I mean, we'll talk about it when we get to the after the show review, but it almost wasn't my worst match of the night. So, Oh, yeah, it wasn't my worst match of the night. It, and we'll talk about it. it I, my prediction with the Battle Royal wasn't even that it was going to be bad. I just thought it was going to be, like, way too long. Um, yeah. That was not the issue whatsoever. There was, um, a, there was like, a few matches that felt, like, way too long. 
Yeah, it, it felt a bit longer, but it, it wasn't long whatsoever. So that kind of took away from like my disenjoyment of it. Um, my my match that I was just like, oh, that's going to be really bad was um, Iska and Yano. I was like, oh, that doesn't. Suck. Oh yeah, yeah. In the semi main, like that's no, crazy. The thing that, is, that I was really like, bad. I was like, I thought about that, but I was like, dude, this guy Kobashi and Muto, this match could suck, and it'll st- it'll just still be good because they're there. Yeah, and and that's kind of what I realized once I was watching the match is that it's like, for as insane it is that Iska and Yano found themselves in the semi main event of one of the biggest Puro shows of like a generation. Uh, <laughs> against two of the greatest wrestlers to ever live. It, it wasn't about it wasn't, them. Yeah. Um, and I also kind of didn't, I didn't think it was going to be bad, but I didn't expect a lot of um, Team Nagata versus Team Morishima. Um, I, you know, I, that was it kind of like one that I was man. like, I was like, ah, that sounds like it could be fine, but it doesn't, it has a very low floor. That's how I saw it. Um, yeah. But yeah, those those were my, my predi- negative predictions. I thought it was going to be the semi-main. You thought it was going to be the Battle Royal. Let's see how our opinions changed mm-hmm. as we got through the show. Um, the show began with Mara Fuji uh, coming out, and he was out of action. I believe he was injured at the time. Yeah, he was uh, injured. And so he introduced the show, then brought out Suwama, Shiozaki, and Tanahashi, who were obviously the three figureheads. Champions. Yeah, the champions, the figureheads of the of the show. Um, so that was just a little opener, I would say. The, the closer the uh post show was a little bit more energetic than this. <laughs> we'll talk about that <laughs> but uh the opening ceremony you know it was just it was just the four uh big dogs of of you know the companies um first match of the night was the sunrise of j oh match. you got the names that's how i did yeah mine. i got i, I got, got all the names. names i got all the yeah. names um and this is gonna be one hell of a show because i am not good at reading names and there are a lot of names on the show um so the sunrise of j match was uh kaz hayashi ricky marvin chuji kondo and tiger mask number four i believe against bushi hiroshi yamato um kota bushi and taiji ishimori so i i got my notes are pretty kind of long form um uh, yeah, so I- I'll go ahead and get uh, what I think out of the way. I actually love this opener. Uh, mm. Sick opening sequence from uh, Ricky Marvin and Bushi. Uh, this is babyface Bushi, by the way. Uh, All Japan. Yes. Bushi. It's not I love Death Bushi. Mac death match. Yeah. This is, I love Bushi Bushi. Uh, still the man. Uh, Ricky Marvin and Kaz Hayashi <laughs> do the silly string. I have that for some reason because they do do the silly <laughs> string in this. And I was like, oh, shit. <laughs> um, I have an all caps fucking love Suji Kondo. Yeah, Bushi went for his strike rush just for Suji Kondo to club him in the head repeatedly with open hand chops. Uh, Tiger Mask 4 has just always sucked, it seems. Get Tiger Mask out the ring before I skip this. <laughs> People don't talk about enough about how great, not good, but great Pete Kasayashi was because he was cooking at some point with somebody. I think it was uh, Taiji Ishimori, and I was just like, God damn, yeah. Kaz is so yeah. good. I- Ishimori was moving like a madman, bro. Yeah. Like, for someone who has like I've seen plenty of Noah Ishimori, but yeah. for someone who has primarily watched so much New Japan Ishimori, it's like it's night and day. Like this Listen, dude is when is big stars moving. from other companies go to New Japan, they're just looking for their last big checks. So. Oh, and I, I get that. Like I don't, I you know, all power to him. But like this dude, like you forget after a few after as somebody who watches Best of Super Juniors every year pretty faithfully, um, pretty much every match as much as I can, every good match at least. Uh, I've seen a lot of Chichi, Taiji Ishimori in the past few years, and this is a different animal back in the yeah. day, right? I mean, he he was just moving like a motherfucker. And I, I'll I'll echo your sentiments, Ricky Marvin, that guy, man. I, yeah. I've said it, dude. Many Ricky times. Marvin was probably the MVP of this match. Oh, Oh, um, Ricky Marvin's that guy. They just Loved let him, him cook, and it was perfect. Uh, crowd hated when Kondo blocked the superstar elbow, which if you haven't seen the superstar elbow, elbow, uh, Taiji Shimori does a back handspring and does yep. a full rotation backflip when he comes to handspring back into an elbow, and it's really sick. You should look it up. Uh, however, they won back. They were won back quickly when uh, Shuji Kondo stored the power of God into him and just King Kong glared the fuck out of Ishimori, and he flipped inside out. Just very, very good opener. I loved everything about this. I felt like it, it was a bit too short. That's what I will say. Especially because yeah. some of these matches got a lot, lot more time than they needed. The um, thing is, I'd this, rather this it match be too given, short than too yeah, long. Yeah, I guess so. I think this match could have been given a couple more minutes. Because I think Shuji Kondo and Ubushi, we you said yeah, Marvin, they were cooking. Marvin, Marvin was the MVP, and I agree. If they had given Kondo and Ibushi like a, a minute, like an extra minute of just them going at it, I think that would have been like the 
stand out of the match. But Ricky Marvin, you know, he he did his shit. I need Ricky Marvin and Noah again. I don't care if he's old, washed up, if he sucks. It's better than the junior division right now. Him and Junta can do some stuff, man. <laughs> like let's just do let's just do some. I am begging. Um, the Noah junior division is non-canon. I <laughs> neglect you from ever bringing it up on this show. Just don't ever do that. <laughs> no stinger. No stinger. Okay. No. Um, no. <laughs> one, one bit early on in the match that I want to draw attention to was um, Bushi and Marvin were were wrestling, and this was this is Bushi back in the day. I think Bushi this was, was killing injury. Yeah, uh, this Bushi. was like this is really quick, fast paced Bushi. Mm-hmm. Um, him and Marvin going crazy, and then he like threw Marvin out of the ring, and then he takes off his mask to reveal a second mask. mask. That's my favorite shit ever. I love that so much. When there is a a mysterious second mask underneath your pre existing mask, everybody except for Starlight Kid who does that is based. I swear, love it. Um, You're just sexist, and, yeah. man. I think that's <laughs> how it is. Easy, easy. <laughs> uh, no. Um, and yeah, the, the finish was Taiji Shimori pinning Ricky Marvin with the 450. This lasted 10 minutes. Um, Ibushi and Kondo kept fighting after the bell, which, like like I said... I guarantee Ibushi you Kondo, that went nowhere. Because <laughs> Ibushi no, you know was what? IWGP Junior Champion. I looked <laughs> it up. went nowhere. But... Three years later, they had a singles match at DDT Peter Pan, and Ibushi won. Just, just three, have... It took three years for them to do anything together ever again i like to and, think in my head because i i was not in a ddt at that point i would like to think in my head that the build for that match is like hey you remember all together one like three years ago <laughs> <laughs> that's a that's a that's a that's a takagi style of booking it's like hey remember that one time that that one bit happened yeah we should we should just run with that um but yeah i thought this was this was fun i liked it but i think it definitely left a lot on the table um you know it's, it's hard to showcase eight people in a 10 minute match and when one of them is Tiger Mask, that's a wasted minute. Um, yeah. The thing is, this was know. a really good junior match, and yet it wasn't even the best junior match of the night. Oh, no, no. We'll, we'll talk about that in a bit. So, yeah, I, I would say there a little bit, maybe a little bit under my my predictions of this being a potential match of the night, match of the night. Mm-hmm. Um, but I thought it was still good nonetheless. Um, second match, which is uh, <laughs> crazy to on paper, yeah. it was uh, Fighting for the Future. Saya Sonata, Shuhei Tanaguchi, and Tetsuya Naito against Manabu Soya. That's a fucking Bum. crazy team. Tanaguchi no, yeah. Bro, is Tanagu- on this team. We're going to talk about Tanaguchi for a second. We need to, we need to, like, we need to talk about him. But it's against Manabu Soya, Muhammad, Muhammad, wait. Muhammad Yone. Thank you. And Yujiro Takahashi. Um, yeah, so this is No Limit, S, and uh, Funky Express colliding. Uh, eventually, Funky yeah. Express. No, no Limit. Yeah, that, no, there. you're right. They're actually yeah. all, like, tag teams yeah yeah and, that's I thought that crazy. Was dope. and that's not even like bringing into account you know the the whole naito and sonata yeah early on thing but yeah this was this was kind of a very straightforward match because it did have the the three like parallels i guess because mm-hmm. sonata and soya were the um all asia tag champions i think not yep. all japan um so they were all asia champions and then you know like I said, Yone and Tanaguchi, they ended up being a tag team, and they were both the, kind of the stalwarts of the undercard for Noah at the time. No Limit just broke up, so there yeah. was a little bit of heat there. Um, and yeah, how did you feel about this match? Uh, I'm glad you asked, because I got quite a few notes here. Um, <laughs> yeah, we're fighting for the future here, and I'm going to fight for the past right now, because I hate Ghetto. Um, shout out Anson's number one wrestler. Shout out No Limit. Uh, better than your favorite tag team. Uh, Naito's theme is the first one I've actually heard so far that wasn't dubbed, so that's great. Man, that uh, pissed me off so much later down the show. Yeah, I was like, these motherfuckers. I was so mad <laughs> later in the show, but whatever. I said, you'll never believe who starts this match, Sonata and Muhammad Yone. <laughs> Such a crazy matchup, too. Like, <laughs> nobody ever thought of that. <laughs> I said, if Yudro never had his big injury that took away all his power, he'd probably be the best new wrestler of all time. Yeah. Man was a demon. He was just throwing guys way bigger than him with ease, just like he did to Taniguchi. Sucks so bad, Taniguchi never got to a main event level. He rocks. I'll never forgive Gato for being a bad booker and ruining the No Limit split story. <laughs> uh, love the way Naito used the RVD jump to the top rope whenever his knee somewhat functioned before his missile drop kick. Shuhei Taniguchi yeah. getting a hot tag on this match is wild. <laughs> um, NJ, NJPW guys also taking a pin here is wild because now NJPW guys would turn on their partners and pin them. <laughs> oh my god, All-Star Junior Festival, that was crazy. Yeah. Um, 
But no, yeah, I think for for all it's and this is a crazy sentiment for people who watch, you know, New Japan, who even watch Noah, uh, it, you will be surprised to know that I would say Shohei Tanaguchi was like my favorite part of this match. He was insane, and like Tanaguchi I love, was the man, dude. dude Sonata's Sonata's like one of my favorite wrestlers. I wrote a I wrote a manifesto about how much I love Sonata like last week. Tsuya Naito's the a beast. Soya is cool, and you said at Soya this time, is cool, and you at this time was like absurd right and and i obviously you can he was the strongest man on the new japan roster according to tanahashi before he i believe it i believe he was he He was was fucking tossing tanaguchi i was like bro tanaguchi's not small (laughs) but But, tanaguchi was cooking in this match like tanaguchi was so good i feel like he's the guy that will never get the love he deserves because it's like i watched this and i was like i think i think everybody knows he like still rocks like most of the time the he's thing. in a singles match and Noah it just pops off because he just has violence that's the best way I can describe it I was watching this involved. I was watching this and I was thinking oh man he used to be so good and I thought about it it's like he's oh had he's like, still good he's had like two of my favorite Noah matches this year like him and him and Sugiero were doing tag stuff and they were killing it like that was really good stuff and then his they, match with Hideki Suzuki was crazy yeah like like that's what I mean like this dude has is like a consistency machine. You could see it here it a little bit earlier on. Obviously, it's fighting for the future. So he lacks that charisma to it. take him to yeah. that like main event level, which I understand. But you can also still like push him as like a national champ or get him a GHC challenge whenever you can. Because to be fair, in my opinion, I don't think Tanaguchi is like like this charisma vacuum everybody claims because when he was King Tanya, that was a fucked fucker, right? Oh, there, that was man. so hilarious. He had gold chain cigar glasses. That dude was insane. <laughs> like, I don't think people understand. I, I had not watched Noah, like, whatsoever. Um, When they invaded at Wrestle Kingdom, I think, last year. King Tanya he was in full he was He was the only motherfucker <laughs> I remember. Like, it's like, okay, there's KJ Muto, there's that motherfucker with the crown. That's it. Like, that's... <laughs> <laughs> that, that was and the weird the weird guy with, with bleached hair and turns out two of those are two of my favorite guys on the roster now um yeah tanaguchi i cannot say enough good things about him insane powerhouse he really just like he really made this match he gave it a lot of flavor i would say uh manobu soya was probably the weakest point uh well muhammad yone just didn't do I anything th- yeah i think um, him and yone just straight up didn't do anything yeah yeah i, I don't remember a single thing yone did uh but soya he kind of sat on naito for a bit and i was like oh you could have you could have given this to somebody else you could have done something else with this um, but that you know you know soya and sonata were tag champs so they yeah had to, like, no I, I get why on. he was there but i was just like eh, you could you could do more or if not just be someone else like you know what i mean like that that was kind of how i saw the soya output but yeah i would say uh the sonata team was just off the charts obviously you know naito and sonata yeah, future iwgp tag team champions um which is crazy to see and yeah, they won Sonata Pin Yudro with the Muto Moonsault 11 minutes um, after the match. Some funny stuff. One, I didn't know Naito did the, the eye gimmick yes. this early on. I didn't know he, he was doing that for that long. Because it um, started when uh, him and Yudro went to Mexico. It was very mm. racial. Uh, no, I, I, knew was, I knew it was because he went to yeah. Mexico. I just didn't know it was him and Yudro. Yeah, because they went to Mexico the first time, and he started doing it there whenever they had their Ruta turn with Okamura. Basically, if you go to Mexico and you're Japanese, you're, you're usually teaming up with Okamura. Uh, <laughs> but um, they had their at first they were like doing babyface stuff, but Okamura, like if you go to Mexico, you're gonna turn heel and you're gonna be with Okamura. That's just how it is. Like you're not gonna be a face in Mexico unless like you're an established New Japan guy like Tanahashi going over there. Like as soon as they turned heel he adopted the eye thing and it was just like what is this fucking little weirdo weirdo doing just running around with this eye yeah, that thing? was a that was a like a reference to like people obviously being racist right yes. like it's like it's yes. like the it's like yes. can you you know yeah you, you, if you think a little bit you could figure out what the connotation is i always yeah. thought that was so based like i was like that's the coolest that's the coolest like like fuck you fuck you you racist like that's the coolest thing ever uh i, yeah. I love that yeah i didn't know he did that until I, I thought he did that you know a little bit later on but yeah, super cool. Him, he refused to shake Sonata's hand. He shook Tanaguchi's hand. Sonata shook Tanaguchi's hand. Naito shook Tanaguchi's hand. Refused to shake hands with each other. And so I was like, damn. How can you feel bad that he got fucking packed and smoked by Sonata? Like, no, that's what I was about to say. Is that it's like, it's like 12 years he later. He would live to regret that. He would live to regret that 12 years later when he got dumped out of his head with a deadfall. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> this was, this was all a calculated plan from the cold skull. Um, yeah, I thought this was just a solid match, though. I thought more than anything, it was just a head trip. Like with mm-hmm. hindsight, it's just like, damn, all these motherfuckers are are just crazy. Um, 
and you could still see most of them doing it uh, at a high level now. I would say Soya has gotten a lot better from. What oh I've yeah, seen he's a lot better. And, he doesn't yeah. like blow me away, and I just like forget no, about him a lot. But, but I think he's way better now than he was yeah. at this stage. And then you know, but also you you see people like uh, Takashi and Naito. You see no limit, and it's like, man, if if those injuries didn't fuck up their knees and their back, and like they would be on an insane level. Uh, right now they still are I, like this is no disrespect to either of them i think they're both still i mean they're really still good like roles. super popular <laughs> yeah yeah and they're they're really good in their roles like don't get me wrong and i Naito love can i still have a crazy i love you but and i don't wish a worldwide pandemic on any of us but thank god for that <laughs> pandemic because they that forced them to care about japanese talent so you just got yeah. a career rejuvenation of a lifetime being put in the top hill unit and they're like so popular now they're about to be double tag champs we're fucking up baby shouts out <laughs> shouts out that fucking pandemic man you know, this, this might <laughs> or no this will probably this might come out after dominion so we might just be <laughs> we, you might be you might be listening back to this and being just like man <laughs> They should have won. I think they should win. Um, big House of Torture fans over here. Uh, yeah, this, uh, this if, busted Super Two's run if completely the, got me. If the British team wins, I will launch a full scale attack on Bushi Road because between the Tam thing and Yudro Bushi... not winning the tag, to- oh. yeah, the uh, Aaron Hanari and Great Ocon. Um, <laughs> <the> British. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, hey, are you thinking of TMDK? No, no, no. Great Ocon's the bro super bro that brother weight champion or whatever the fuck that red pro title is called and like uh hanare is bald and weird so (laughs) but no uh, you know if we if we have to listen back and you know cry about this then i i will but i will launch a full-scale attack on bushiro because between the tam thing and then this uh this would honestly kill my joy of wrestling this year (laughs) yeah Um, um, but uh, it's crazy because because if we look at this handshake also before we move on, this is probably going to be the Tokyo Dome main event next year. So yeah, it should be. Uh, that's that's my opinion. I yeah. think it should be. Um, yeah, I mean th- this is so dope to watch. The All these guys are like, stuff. except for like uh, Yone are like in prominent positions still because we just talked yeah. about. Yeah. Uh, you know, Yujiro's probably about to be double tag champ. Uh, Naito's probably about to win G one again in main event Tokyo Dome. Sonata's IWGP World Champion. Uh, which, despite my dislike, my dislike of New Japan, it's the seen as the top world title, even though it's fucking ugly. Um, I think Sonata makes it look good, but that's yeah. Just... Well, that's just because he's a handsome guy, and uh, Soya is still at this point one half of the AJPW Tag Champions, and he's getting a little bit more of a push in Noah since uh, everybody has decided that Congo is just not fun anymore, and we're just gonna go do something else. <laughs> so fucked. So fucked. Taiguchi uh, also just held, held the yeah he just I was about to GSC say he just belt. held the uh, GSC uh, tag belts and he's got another singles match with Hideki Suzuki coming up that y'all should probably check out because they're gonna beat yeah. the shit out of each other it's gonna be great yeah totally um yeah again this match solid match but really just the power of hindsight makes it just insane match top to bottom um next up the over the border match yeah this is crazy <laughs> Akitoshi Akitoshi Saito and Togi Makabe against Roki Goto. And Tayo Keo. Keo? T-K-O. Oh, yeah. Tayo Keo, the fucking guy. I said, okay, I got to read my notes to this. I forgot I wrote this. I said, I have no idea what to say about these tag team pairings, but Goto saw Tayo Keo shorts and said, yeah, I bet them bitches comfortable as hell and then called his gear, <laughs> gear maker. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, this uh, is terrible. I, I will say that I think this is my least favorite match of the night. <laughs> I, no, no. Okay, okay. No, I actually started to have fun with this. And granted, it was like four o'clock in the morning when I watched this. So, but like, I was having like, a decent time because i thought it was gonna suck but i was having myself a good time granted i like sped through some of the match i said makabe and saito are actually a pretty fun little heel team uh and then i said tayo busted out the side russian leg sweep he's based as hell fucking love the side russian leg sweep that's the greatest move of all time so i feel uh, like i feel like you would know this more than me was was tayo Keo a thing because he vaguely looked like a white keiji mudo or is that just like no actually <laughs> No, that's just something that happened. Okay, so okay. Tao Kea was a thing because he was like one of the few people left from the Noah Exodus, and uh, mm. when Muto gaslit Matoko Baba and whatever, and to take over all of Japan. Well, even before then, because he was like junior champ uh, at the time of the Exodus, I believe. Um, he was one of the people they wanted to get behind, and he had hair, but he just shaved and you know started wearing you know the shorts as like a. And obviously, that was that was his. But he turn, did. Right? 
Uh, no, no, he actually started teaming with Muto whenever Muto made the uh, switch over as a well, actually, not before Muto even made the switch. Like when Muto was on his way out of New Japan and all Japan, they were a tag team. Uh, it was like called the badass, uh, what's it called, like translate team or something or a trading team because it was like comprised of people from different companies. Um, mm. Interesting. But uh, yeah, no, he he wasn't a thing because he like vaguely looked like Keiji Muto. Uh, Keiji Muto actually like did this first. <laughs> like he brought <laughs> bald people to the forefront. <laughs> um, no, but uh, he was just pushed heavily because he was like one of the. It was like him, Fuchi, and Kawada that were left from the Exodus. That makes sense. That makes uh, sense. Outside of the uh, Gaijins that were like touring, like he wasn't a touring Gaijin. He was like full time. So yeah, uh, he yeah. was somebody they got behind. I will say uh, calling it never... the over the border match is crazy. Um, <laughs> That's crazy. He's from like Hawaii. That's yeah. He's... And the, the rest are from Japan. <laughs> like... One of four. Yeah, one of four is from Hawaii over the border. <laughs> yeah. Not only that, but like uh, Tao Kea, uh I don't. I haven't watched much of Muto All Japan, but uh, a lot of these sentiments I hear from people that have watched that time is, uh, in their opinion, Tao Kea, uh didn't get as much as he should have. Uh, mm. Uh, I remember he did hold the triple crown, but it was very brief from what yes. I remember. Um, I think he held it twice, but another time. And uh, Dr. Jonathan Foy wrote a book uh, covering uh, the Muto years uh, where he interviewed Taya okay, uh, I want to say it was the Muto years uh, or the uh, Kanbaru. I want to say Muto years, though, uh, where he interviewed Taya okay, and Taya okay, liked being the tag guy. He was like, it was a cool moment for him to be the uh, triple crown champion, but he liked, you know, working in tags and doing you know he likes to make people look good he really didn't you know i mean he of course he wanted to be triple crown champion it was cool for him but like it's not some people are just tag guys you know some people are just tag guys. well no it's just not something he was actively seeking because he was just looking to work to not only make himself look good but make everybody else look good which i mean i think that's a good i think that's a good statement because i think that is what defines a good pro wrestler is your ability to not only make yourself look good but make your opponent look good as well um but a lot of people say he got like fucked over, and I think as like uh, toward the end of his All Japan run, like he uh, unsuccessfully challenged for the Triple Crown, and then he won Champion Carnival, and then unsuccessfully challenged like r- immediately right after that. So, um, but he's coming back on like the next coming up. Uh, Word, yeah, he's coming back on like a, oh, that's wild. Next coming up All Japan shows, uh, I think it's like him, Kojima, and I want to say maybe Kaz Hayashi or somebody that's else. That's a crazy team. Like that sounds like a that's like well because it's like Muto All Japan. Um, but yeah, I know he's doing at least two shows coming up. I don't know. I thought he was retired, but maybe he's just like chill. Yeah, that's that's why I thought as well. But you know, interesting. Um, yeah, I did not like this match though. Uh, I, I it it felt like it felt like Saito and Makabe they were a good heel team, but. Because it was only a nine minute match. Yeah. There was no They couldn't like, really there was no even like like moment of a comeback. They like Goto and Honestly, okay. Kayo just got their asses beat and then lost. That <laughs> was like nine Honestly, minutes. Honestly, Makabe that? and Saito should have been in the semi main. <laughs> yeah, no, yeah, actually you're right. I think that would have worked a lot better. Um People don't understand I... how good Pete Togi Makabe was. Like he's a shitter now, but stuff. like heel Togi Makabe was just beast. He just beat the shit out of people. It was great. But yeah, so you thought this match was okay? I, I yeah, I thought it was okay. I didn't like think it was over the top, but I was like, oh, okay, oh, you know, this is better than I, what I was hoping for coming in. So, well, um, yeah, Makabe ended up just pinning Tayo in nine minutes. Yeah, King it, Kong it felt, drop build burr. This is the first of a couple matches that felt a lot longer than the ten minute that it was. Um, but moving on to the match, I would say, um, oh, it was the one junior one night carnival match. It was Prince Deva and Ryusuke Taguchi of Apollo Gogo, uh, Kai, Katsuko Nakajima, and Kataro Suzu- Suzuki mm-hmm. versus Genba Hirayanagi. I got mm-hmm. that. Kenta and Yoshinobu Kanemaru of No Mercy, Koji Kanemoto, and Minoru Tanaka. Junior um, stars. This was crazy. This was crazy. This, mm-hmm. this was that match. Um, I will say it's really funny. Uh, Kota Bushi's the only junior champion that wasn't in this match, which is very funny to me. Uh, he's not as over as Genba Hirayanagi. And that's like my <laughs> Genba's my guy. I, I love, love Genba Hironagi. Listen, okay, I absolutely love Genba Hironagi. 
okay? Him never holding the junior title is, like, one of Noah's biggest fumbles ever. He was the man. Not only is he funny, but he legitimately was, like, a great wrestler. He was trained by Taoe, and he threw, like, crazy suplexes. Gimbo was the guy, and he was the perfect, like, person to make fun of as a both his no mercy teammates and the junior stars did they left him out of a lot of stuff and it was funny. oh yeah it was, it was, um, it was a good bit. but uh basically i said uh kenta minoru tanaka koji kanamoto yoshinobu kanamaro and gimba is zavi core to its truest form yeah. no mercy fuck yeah that reaction for kenta tells you one dude thing. it was crazy yeah he got the loudest reaction until like muto and kobashi came out yeah that, um, like it, it like woke me up like and he had a louder like, reaction oh, than probably everybody in the main um i said that tells you one thing he should have been long gone from the junior division at this point <laughs> he was still a junior tag champ with uh kind of and like he, he was uh, getting ready to exit the division to go heavyweight but like he should have been long gone from that division from <laughs> since you know at this point and i said devitt was really only ever good when he was with opalo gogo <laughs> however if people like saw him only in pictures from his heel run i can understand why people think he's this big main event star um yeah, i've avoided i've avoided um basically most of his iwgp junior championship run um he just beat run, he say. just beat a bunch of wrestlers i like so i don't care like um, no, you know what? i've seen the kenny match and i was like damn like <laughs> ddt allowed this <laughs> that's crazy <laughs> well he was on his way i was like i didn't care um only one person in this match wrestles for the company they represent in this match to this day uh which yeah. is uh which i'm gonna call it shit 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 it's cool. uh, uh Taguchi. Yeah. yeah. Everybody else is like in different companies or like well, so Katsu, to be fair, Na- Katsu Nakajima, he was representing Kensuke office at the time, but wasn't he kind of in Noah? Like Yeah, he but he was yet? still Kensuke office. Yeah. So yeah. that's what I mean. I-, I guess I guess Kensuke office was still like a thing at this point and it wasn't yeah. just like uh No, it was still a company. Yeah. Like it just bands when of... Sasaki yeah. retires. Like the retirement match he has, has with Nakajima is like the last Kensuke office. Well, it's not the last Kensuke office show because they do dojo matches with Masa and uh, yeah, no, that's, that's what I mean. But uh, it's still a company at this point. Uh, literally, because Kenta goes to WWE then New Japan. Uh, Tanaka and Kanemoto were freelancing, I want to say, but they were mostly in yes. All Japan uh, because they were junior stars in All Japan. They had like Aja tag title runs and shit. Uh, now Tanaka's in great. Uh, Kanemoto's still freelancing though. Kanemaru's in a uh, in jpw as well genba's retired devitt's in wwe and he should stay there uh katara suzuki's freelancing again uh literally uh everybody is all guys in dragon gate um, yeah shout out which, former which Kai champion did not recognize him i did not recognize him as the same po- I, person because i've seen i've seen modern kai matches and i, I just didn't, did I because didn't connect up connect to that whatsoever. i've seen old kai matches that's the thing i saw yeah. that like as I was getting into Dragon Gate, yeah, um, I was just like, I was just like, wait, that's that guy, that's the Zebrats guy, like that's yeah, that's, that's my that former that's Open the Dragon Gate champion. That's crazy. Yeah. I mean, Kai did crazy in this as well. Like, I, like, yeah. I, I think this match, I, I think I actually good. have a note for him, a note for him at the end of this. Um, Insane match. I said, uh, bet being kicked by both Kinta and Kanemoto in the corner had to get you <laughs> rethinking life. That had to suck. I I don't I understand wrestling. You know you got to take, but that had to suck, bro. <laughs> Kenta and Kanemoto kicking you repeatedly. Uh uh-uh. uh. Um, Nakajima and Kanemoto with the violence they that had. Pro- they that almost was... had my favorite exchange of the night. But something happened later on, and I'll talk about it. But they almost had my favorite exchange of the night. They were going at it. There's if you like watch anything theme. from this show, please go in there. Like. Throughout this whole card, there's usually one pairing that you can seek out in every match. And for this one, it was mm-hmm. Nakajima and Kanemoto. 100%. Uh, Minoru is wrestling circles, squares, triangles, you name it, around Devitt. <laughs> <laughs> um, and Kai might forever be underappreciated by fans. And that's still true. Kai's the man. I love Kai. You know, speaking of Devitt, at one point, uh, Tanaka just decided not to catch Devitt off of a tope and devit just like ate so much shit it was crazy he said, get good <laughs> he was just like ah you missed <laughs> what you gonna do uh and he was like an inch away but he's just like no i ain't doing that um yeah i feel like uh nakajima n- refusing to take shit in interpromotional matches is mm-hmm. like the best ongoing <laughs> theme of, of of wrestling is just like you never really know how bad it will be you know sometimes it'll be a tatsuya endo sometimes it'll just be him fucking up um kanimoto but it, it's just always a thing you always gotta be be aware that uh 
that knockout artist Katsu is, is out to get you. Um, yeah, this match was great. Uh, <laughs> the match started. Dude. With, uh, with, what, do, you, do you buy this? Wait, 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 one second, one second. Yeah, go ahead. The match started with world-famous junior wrestling legend, Yoshinobu Kanemaru wrestling an Irish dude. Uh, and eventually, uh, it, it really started to heat up. Um, I would say this was like one of the first matches that really like felt like it had full crowd attention to the point where like the crowd mm-hmm. was like biting on everything going oh crazy. yeah they in were invested in everyone in this match for the most yeah, part yeah totally um did you you saw so i post a spot on twitter y'all can go see this on my twitter at a ada millennial if you want to see it <laughs> um cheap plug but also that's where it is so there's a spot where the uh i don't want to call them the hill team but i mean the non the no mercy team yeah the no mercy yeah. led team the no mercy junior stars team uh I think it's either I think it's Taguchi they're working on, or maybe it's Devitt. It's one of the two. But they go on the offense and uh Tanaka and uh Kanamoto do their uh double teams. I think it's just some uh kicks. And then Kanamaro comes out the corner with his jumping splash where he yells, Kenta does a double foot stomp, and then Gimba's on the other rope and he goes oh, to yeah, do yeah, a yeah. big jump. He's about to do the greatest flip you've ever seen. He gets it down immediately off the ropes, just runs out and does a little roll up pin. <laughs> what a, I was, Gen was the man. God. Genba was so good. Like just every, every comedic beat of, of Genba in this match was perfect. Um I would say, yeah, that was that was a spot that really stuck out in my mind. Um it reminds me, and it's funny because he's probably the most complete. I'm not even saying this just because it's recency bias. He's probably the most complete comedic guy ever because he That's knew wild. when to turn it on and I off. It he knew when to turn it on and off. I, I put him in that same realm as a uh, Kaori Yoniyama, if that makes sense. Can he can turn it. it on and off. He knows, and he's like legitimately funny. He's not like just doing like bad jokes. He's like hilarious. <laughs> yeah, I, I thought he was great, and I also think that like. Um, I don't know, and you could you could tell me because again, mm-hmm. I, I haven't seen a ton from back then. A lot of like the ke- stuff that Kenta does as comedy stuff, I am seeing. It's like, oh, he he probably got this in part from Gemba because like there are certain spots that Kenta does that are just kind of like memey, you know? I mean, just doing bits just as a joke, and I was like, that seems like something that Gemba would do. <laughs> and, yeah, the like, thing is, like, Kenta's smart. always been funny though. That's the thing. Okay, like so like. Even if he hasn't been a prototypical comedy guy, yeah. so to speak, he's always been funny. He's always had his moments. That's fair. That's fair. Because, yeah, I, well, I could definitely see why they work well, so well as a team. Because, like, Kenta being the straight man, well, Yoshinobu and Kenta being straight man, and uh, Genba just being the the wacky one, it kind of works because they're all three really good wrestlers, and they all kind of have, like, Yoshinobu has this dry humor about him that yes. I feel like people do not do not give him enough grab for um he's so funny people even if people that humor even if that humor is like him just beating taishi shimori in like two minutes and be like you're you're a pussy ha leaving like that's the funniest thing that happened last year he has um, the old man it's he's great. like he's got the old man humor it's great yeah uh, uh kai gets no the win though kai gets yeah, kai, the win though because he's a old fan junior flash. champion yeah beautiful that was his a uh, old finish he still does it now but he's changed it up obviously as he's added yeah. muscle and shit um, probably so he doesn't have to do the frog splash all the time. Uh, fuck, I I loved it. This, like I said, this was the second junior match where I said this juniors are saving the show so far. This is yeah. Great. This was this was probably my favorite match of the night. Like it, it was up there certainly, uh, top two probably. Top yeah. Two, maybe oh, two. it's definitely top two. No, it's me. probably top two. Yeah. Um, and yeah, actually, yeah, I think this might just be one. We'll, we'll get to that. Um, yeah, <laughs> I'm glad because we got we got two great shitters match. coming up. So come um, on. Yeah, let's let's get on to it. The one night reunion match is Jushin Thunder Liger, Masakatsu Funaki, and Takuma Sano versus Minoru Suzuki, Taichi, um, both of them representing Suzuki Gun and Atsushi Aoki. Um, they dubbed over Kazuni Nare, sacrilege, disgusting. They also I, dubbed over a Liger's theme. Yeah, it's like man, it just sucks. Like I was so excited because the crowd was ready to like, like, and you could they over blew. Like they tried to dub over it, you couldn't you couldn't dub over that Kazanina Ray shout. Like they were yeah. yelling. It was loud. Crazy part is if you go and find like this on like this show anywhere else, it still doesn't have the theme song. So um it's messed up. I think it only aired one place, is it? That's why. Yeah. It's not uh, a new Japan world. Long hair tai chi sent wrestling back generations was one of my uh notes. Um <laughs> why visually or like or just because visually. Um, okay. 
Atsushioki was so good, man. RP to the GOAT, man. I love Atsushioki. Yeah. Um, Takuma Sano was also super washed at this point. He was yeah. the worst part of this match. So I... who was the reunion? Because Funaki and Suzuki were against each other. I know yeah. they had a team. Was Sano and Liger were okay. li- uh, rivals. You remember they brought Sano back for his uh, retirement to finish. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like this, like he's heavyweight at this point because him and Takayama have a GHC heavyweight tag title run, and then Takayama turns on him to join a uh, No Mercy. Um, but uh, like in the nineties, he was a junior and he was Liger's big rival until he left for SWS. Uh, one of Ten Ryu's very bad companies that failed. <laughs> um, okay, um, that, that makes. So sense. I think that's the reunion part. So for so former rivals and former tag teams. So yeah. former rivals on the same team, former tag teams on opposite teams. Interesting. Um, yeah, well, because you know, uh, I'm pretty sure at this ahead. point, uh, Suzuki and Funaki have already had their feud in all Japan, and I think Suzuki's mm-hmm. back firmly in New Japan at this point. Gotcha. Yeah, because yeah, because by by wasn't Suzuki just starting 2011? Wasn't that yes? Because he takes over yeah. from Kojima. Kojima gun died a nasty death. Um, but yeah, this this match wasn't great. But I will say, I think people gave old Taichi way worse of a rap than I he might have deserved. Because like he wasn't bad in this match particularly. He was just being a heel. You know what I mean? Like because yeah. I feel like Taichi is regular, and this come from someone who now loves Taichi. I, I only caught a little bit of his junior run because I wasn't big into junior wrestling when I first got into New Japan, so I didn't really watch a ton of his junior stuff. But I remember people just hating him and just being like, "Oh, this guy's like the worst wrestler in the company." I was like, "Damn, really? That that's weird." And then like he turned heavyweight, I was like, "Oh, this is my favorite guy in the company." I don't get what people are talking about. I'm like, I watched this, and it's like, he he he's good, like he's fine. <laughs> he's he's just a he's just kind of like a. A chicken shit heel that's kind of the point you know but yeah i i thought that was actually really funny was uh suzuki and taichi did not want to fuck with funaki at all like funaki was like i'm starting this match and I mean, they were just like you? no no i wouldn't i mean i would die like let's let's be fair um and then eventually taichi like you know did bits and got around it and eventually he got in he he like tried to hit him and then he got hit with a tna kick and just left he's like nope i'm not wrestling no more i'm done i am not fucking with funaki you can get in. Uh, and I thought that was really, really funny. Um, Liger's mask was like five minutes of this match. And that mask is a thick, thick mask because there was no even, there wasn't even a tear. There wasn't even like a slight rip. They could not do anything to that motherfucker's mask. <laughs> and they tried for like five minutes of this 12 minute match. It's insane. Uh, yeah, the. Uh... I guess the non Suzuki Aoki Goon team won, and I was very glad to be done with this match until <laughs> I got to the next match. <laughs> yeah, it gets worse. Um, yeah, I thought there was some. No, there wasn't. Um, <laughs> there wasn't really anything. One thing. Shout out at Sushi Aoki. Rest in peace to a legend. One of the best junior heavyweight wrestlers of all time. Never, never got his fair shake in my opinion, from fans and from Noah, because I don't even think he held the junior singles title in Noah. Um, I know he holds it in all Japan whenever he goes there, but Aoki is so good. Anyway. Yeah, I would say I would say the Funaki Aoki closing stretch was decent. Um, but the, the one part that <laughs> stuck out to me as a as a Joshi fan currently in a, a you know stardom fan, they were they were Suzuki Goon and Aoki were just doing some, you know, heel stuff. And eventually Taichi is like isolating Liger outside, just beating him up. And during this time, Suzuki's distracting the ref. And him and the ref start fighting. And I was like, what refs start fighting with you? Like, what is what is happening? I look at the motherfucker's face. It's Daichi. It's Daichi Muramura. What the f- Muriyama, whatever. What the fuck? <laughs> I was so confused. I get he, he used to ref for all Japan, but I was just like, this guy's haunting me. I can't escape him. <laughs> Every fucking match I watch has this motherfucker in it. It's crazy. The only thing that would have made this match better is if Tam Nakano was here. Yeah, let's move on. Um, <laughs> I mean, to... she was here in spirit because of Taichi. So. Yeah, yeah. Little Taichi's cursed, I will say. <laughs> like, just, just visually. I agree. Yeah. Like, Taichi being like this skinny little motherfucker, this like twerp with the long hair. Uh, Alex isn't here. So I can't call him 
the T word without, <laughs> but like just real funny, real funny looking guy um, at that point. But moving on, it's the Destroyer Cup Battle Royal. Um, Destroyer, the Destroyer, obviously like a, a very famous name in the history of Japanese wrestling. Um, he like, it, t- it took a very uncomfortable amount of time for the Destroyer to get into the ring to announce the match. Um, and then like, he like said a couple of Japanese words poorly. And then he's like, this is my son. And he hands the mic to his son, super white son, the most white guy you've ever seen. And his son is just completely fluent. And everybody was like, oh, no, cool. Um, and that was before the match. So, um, I <laughs> should, I, should I go through the, through the list? Y- yeah, you okay. should, because people need to understand. Yeah. So the match, the Destroyer Cup Battle Royal, featured Gato, Super Strong Machine, Masanobu Fuchi, Mizada, uh, Masu Inoue, Akira Tawe, Rene Dupree, Tomohiro Ishii, Tomoake Hanma, Yoshiniri Ogawa, fuck that guy, um, Kentaro Shiga, Black Bushi, which is something that I didn't know existed until this match, that there was me. an original... <laughs> 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 there, was, there was an OG Black Bushi who was not Bushi who is now the Jet Black Death Mask Bushi. It was a different... It was a Canadian, in fact. I looked it up. It was a Canadian dude. Um, and then it was um, Hideo Saito, Joe Doring, Zack Sabre Jr. ZSJ was in this. Uh, Kushido. Shut up. Kushida. Um, Kushido. Kento yeah, good job. You do it then. What, like, <laughs> what do you want from me? <laughs> Satoshi Ka- Kajiwara, uh, Yasufumi Nakanoe, King Fale, ugh, uh, John Nish- Nishikawa, Soshun, Hiromu Takahashi, Takumi Soya, Takaki uh, Wat- Watanabe. Who's the greatest and, wrestler in New Japan now? Um, uh, and Lee Che Gyong, who, I don't know if you know this, you probably do. That's Jake Lee. Yes. Pre retirement, pre pre young boy retirement, Jake Lee was in this match. He was on the show. He isn't even on the show. That he's the world champion of one of the companies, but Neither he was on Sonata, this show. So... I know that's the crazy. Like how how were Sonata and Jake Lee on this show, but not on the show this week? Like that's not crazy. as over as Eugene Nagata, man. Um, <laughs> this is a this is crazy. Um, so for those who don't know who, because I, I assume most New Japan fans got into it in like 2018. Uh, Takaki Wananabe is evil. Yes. Um, this is pre-excursion. This is Young Boy Evil. Was there anybody else that had a different name? Uh, I don't think so. No. Okay. Yeah, it was just Evil. Intimately. So, my first note, maybe you can help me out this. Who is this guy dressed like Wolfpack Kevin Nash? <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. I was like, I looked up at my phone. I was like, bro, who is oh, this that, guy? No, that was, that, was, that was fucking Jake Lee. Was no, it, not? it wasn't. No. Was Jake Lee was Jake before Lee? him. No, there was a dude who was dressed up like Wolfpack outsiders kevin nash red and black leather pants leather singlet like this dude blonde hair this dude was just kevin nash that's crazy (laughs) this was a fuck match in general dude okay no the 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 best part of this match was before it even started motherfucking ogawa just shit starter refuses to let the destroyer's son help his father out of the ring that's he steps beast. to him. He That's steps to him. Peace. I was like, "Why are you stepping to? He's not in the match. <laughs> Do you know him? Like, what are you doing?" I like to think he didn't know him. I just want to beat up the destroyer's son. And like, like Ogawa was a small ass motherfucker. The destroyer's son used to be a wrestler. Like, he was a heavyweight wrestler back in the day, like briefly. But he's a big guy. Ogawa was this little bean sprout. You know what I mean? Boy. He still is. I love him. And he's just like, he's just like, nah. And and the destroyer is like eighty years old, trying to get out of the ring, about to fall and die. <laughs> yeah. And the, no guy was like, "Nah, nah, you can't help him." <laughs> Why? <laughs> what was happening? <laughs> like I couldn't stop thinking about that for the entire match. It was that and Jake Lee being there was was all I could think about until like the final three. So oh okay, this I w- my big note is there's a lot of random fucker in this match. Let this match <laughs> end. Gato pin Kento Miyohara. This sucks. The final three yeah. are Kentaro Shiga, Masao Noe, and Gato. Dot dot dot. All the Shiga. stars. 
At All least, the stars were here. At least Shiga won. That was bad. It was really funny because I was sitting there. I was like, "Damn, Gato's Gato's lasting a long time." And I was like, "Gato's <laughs> really final three. Gato's still here." Like, and I, I was like, I was like searching on Cage Match. I was like, "Was he still like like a a thing by this point? Like, was he still like a con- a challenger, Dude, a contender, like a him serious and contender?" Gato have like a GAC Junior Tag Title run in like four years, man. <laughs> I was like, "This is." Like, because obviously everybody knows Gato now is the uh, decrepit old, you know, bullet club lover. Um, but like, even even at this point, he was past his prime. Oh like, yeah, very, very past his prime. And it's just like he just blasted. He was there's just a still reason there. he was mostly in tags with Jado because even past his prime, Jado was like leagues above Gato. Jado was the man. Did you know that? Uh, the first Aja Kong versus Bull Nakano match, um, Gato was the reason why Aja won. Why? Uh, he was the special guest referee. Mm. Bulldog KT was the special guest referee of their first cage match. Not the first match. First cage match. Um, crazy. Just crazy. I like to think he just uh, went into the bookers meeting and was just like, yo, I got this idea. Or did, did Aja win? I don't know. But yeah, like it was like on like a house show or whatever. They had a cage match and Ghetto was just like the biggest piece of shit. Like he was just like mm-hmm. attacking. Like it was just I was like, why is Ghetto here before he's even Ghetto? It's crazy. Um yeah, the first person eliminated, believe it or not, Hiroma Takahashi. Um, I believe it because he's still a young boy. Yeah. Uh him and it, uh yeah. Evil get shipped off, I think, around the same time. Uh they do. goes they to do. Mexico, Evil goes to do ROH TV. I always forget that he was on ROH. Um, yeah, there there were like names in this that are like crazy to think about. Like I said, Zack Saber Jr.'s in this shit. Um, he's I don't know. I don't think he was on the second one, but he will be one of the few people to be on like multiple altogether shows, like on you know the current mm-hmm. altogether and the old one. And he's joining a very illustrious group, which is kind of crazy. Um, but this match was bad. Uh, it wasn't. It's it crazy really... that Evil and Hiromu are just young boys in this match, and now they're yeah. like the one of the most high drawing matches New Japan has. <laughs> and their their match was good too back in the day when when Evil won the belt. That that was like that kind of like. I'm not even talking that about Evil that. Belt. I was talking about the uh, Never One they just had. The Never One and the uh, New Japan Cup one oh, they yeah. had like last year. They're both good. And then they said we got to do this Carl Anderson run so Evil doesn't get the belt. <laughs> that was so fucked. And, and, yeah. All right. Um. But yeah, you know, less, I mean, the for the bad, the match, the for the bad, like we were just talking about, there's a lot of stuff to be excited about for the future. Because I mean, like I said, Hiromu and Evil end up being big, and they're still big now. Uh, Zack Saber Jr. does indeed exist, and he is the TV champion until the King of Television takes him out back and puts him to sleep. Um, Kinsu Miyahara becomes the ace of all Japan, and he got pinned by Gato in this match. I just want everybody to know that Gato pinned Kinsu Miyahara. Um, there's like a lot of names that go on to do, you know, stuff. Yeah, I think that's the best way to say it. Um, Yosh- Yoshinari Ogawa hates that guy. Still doing junior piece tag shit. title shit. He's man. still a piece of shit. <laughs> I listen. I love Ogawa. I I think he's one of the best ever. But you know. Some of the I stuff that like, happens in modern Noah is indeed something. Oh man, I feel like it's just a bit for me to just hate Ogawa at this point because it's so easy. Like he's just yeah. so man. Um, the thing is, like, go back and watch old Ogawa or like just like any Ogawa single stuff. He's just such a fun person. He's just a shitter, and he's he's great. I love him. Um, um, oh, this was an eleven minute battle royal, by the way, so it went quick. It well, felt like an hour, but it, well, it was like an hour and fifty five minutes for me, but I mean Um Yeah, and then and then uh Shiga won. Kentaro Shiga. Shouts out. Uh he was given a trophy and an oversized destroyer mask that he wore uh on his way backstage. Just a just a crazy match. It just, okay. It, the five star a... network presents the destroyer battle royal two. <laughs> we got you a big destroyer mask and everything, man. Yeah, I'm gonna call up. I'm gonna I'm gonna call up uh, Joshi Pot and get down the first show of his, yeah. his gimmick. Um, next up, 
not really. I mean, it was better, but it was. Uh, Listen, is, you're just you're just a hater. All right, go ahead, go ahead. Is the Midsummer Encounter and Budokan match? Uh, they gave up on the taglines at this point, if you couldn't tell. Oh no, um, yeah, we we have reached <laughs> the peak. Once we get to these last three, they just didn't even try. It's just like, oh no, they're wrestling. Like, just <laughs> watch it. You know, uh, this is a four on four match. It was Akibono, Akibono, uh, Ryota Hama, Takeshi Morishima, and Yutaka Yoshi. Yoshie, thank you. Versus um, Wataru Ono in no way. Yuji Nagata, Hiroshi Tenzan, and Osamu Nishimura. I names okay. Are, names are getting hard, man. Yeah. After yeah, a while, okay. like, it's hard. I I actually I love this match on paper, even though like uh I'm pretty sure like Morishima wasn't excited about being on this team because he was very <laughs> uh, self conscious about his weight, and it's kind of fucked up to put him in here. Oh, um, man. but I I love this match on paper, uh, because I love Sekigun, which is um. What should we call it? Wataru Noe Inoue and, and Nagata. Nagata. Yeah. They, even though they ruined No Limit holding the uh, new edition of the IWGP tag titles because there's some shitters. Um, literally for like six months straight, there was a period where the tag title match was some form of A-Train and Carl Anderson, No Limit, and Wataru Noe and Yuji Nagata for like six months. I just want everybody to know That's that. That's fucked up. Um, we're, and we're, you, and wait, nine we're, out of, and nine Carl out of, and Albert in, uh, in, weren't they in chaos by then? Or were they... St- Join. They were kicked out of chaos. Uh, oh, okay. No limit kicked them out of chaos and joined chaos. Gotcha. Because uh, Yujiro is a Shinsuke guy, and well, yeah, Yujiro and Naito both are Tanahashi guys, but Yujiro is also a Shinsuke guy. So uh, Shinsuke one of them in chaos. So get rid of the white guys. And the crazy part about the six month loop is bad intention won most of them. <laughs> that sucks. I believe it. I um, believe it. No, but yeah, I I love this match on paper. Even you know. Like I said, it's kind of fucked up with Morshima here, because because like the whole gimmick was a call. These are some big fuckers, and that's just yeah. Mean. I mean, like two of them um, are former sumo wrestlers. Yeah. So they're like on the side. Other than uh, Yoshie, everybody's been a world champion. Like Morshima's JC champ, uh, and both Hama and Aki Bono. I actually have a note about this. I said WrestleMania 21 legend and former <laughs> Triple Ground champion Aki Bono. Um, it's crazy, uh, but uh, I, you know what? I thought it was fun. Uh, my I favorite thought, part, my favorite part was definitely Nagata and Morishima, though. Yeah, that's that's kind of how I felt about it, was that it's like if you skip like the first like seven minutes, and if just you just only the... watch that exchange, yeah, it's it'd be fine. One of the best you matches miss of the night. <laughs> yeah, because Morishima and Nagata killed it. Um, but even before that, it was it was you know okay. I will say, despite this match not being like the the greatest, um. We need more sumo wrestlers in pro wrestling uh, once they retire. And cause... we need more uh, big man wrestlers to stop trying to be Vader and be Takeshi Morishima. That too. That too. I think I think Morishima You can do is Vader hammers. That's so fine. Good. Morishima did Vader hammers. But um... just do everything <laughs> else and not do the Vader bomb and all that. And Yeah. We, we, need, we need to send Keith Lee some Morishima tapes. I think that's the thing that we need to do. Um... But yeah, I thought you know, I thought especially the last few minutes were really good. Um, Morishima also, uh, Morishima had a uh, Morishima had an all time theme. Y'all need to listen to his name. I love it. They didn't dub, they didn't dub his. I was like, oh shit! It seems like they mostly dubbed. Well, no, because they dubbed Kenso's. I, well, I mean, that's well, they had to, different. and I'll tell yeah, you. Yeah, that's different. Later. That's different. Um, I know. <laughs> I heard the theme underneath the dub. I was like, that's crazy. Um, but. Yeah, Morishima pinned uh, Nishimura in 11 minutes. This is a more forgettable match, I would say. I thought it had some good stuff to, in it, but it was uh, not, like, bad enough to where it's like, oh, this was, like, awful. But it wasn't, like, great. So It, it, it should have been a lot better with the names involved. Yeah, I could see that. I could see that. I, I, I Even going back and watching Tenzan back in the day, though, I, I've never really gotten it as much. And Noah's really good from everything I oh, remember. Yeah. Um, Shots out the uh, inventor of the Triangle Lancer. Oh, yeah, that, that's actually what I found out. That's how I found out about him. Was okay. him training with Konami back in the day, um, or Konami training with him rather, and them just like hanging out. And I was like, oh, that's a guy. And so I started watching a little bit of him. He's really good, but uh, I would say Tenzan. I've never really been too impressed with, uh, even in his prime. So that's why I probably saw his matches like, oh, this is. Whenever I looked at the third generation, yeah. it was always Kojima, Nagata, and then Nakanishi and Tenzan are also here. Yeah, I would. I would even put Nakanishi over Tenzan and Nakanishi's prime. No, that's no, that's fair. That's fair. Like, like I, I don't know. Like, I've just 
Tenzan just never like I would say I enjoy Tenzan more now just being the grumpy old man. I don't watch his matches, but like just being just being Wado's like homie. You know what I mean? That's yeah. that's the best role I've ever seen Tenzan in personally. Uh, you know. But yeah, Kojima and, and Nagata really were the the top of that. Nagata's generation. like fifty four now and he's still having good matches. Oh, he's still killing it. He's still killing it. <laughs> Even though um, he walks like he needs to take a shit so bad, but yeah. <laughs> It's true, he does. The oldest 54, 55-year-old man. Yeah. Eugene Nagata. Um, okay, that's enough on that match, I would say, unless you have any right. closing remarks. No, no, no. I'm ready to get to the next one. I'm, I'm cool. Okay, next match is No Fear, Go Ahead. Do not yeah, they Kiyama. gave up. They yeah, gave no, up I on mean, these names. They're like, they like, one of these motherfuckers is called No Fear. I, I don't know. Just go ahead. And <laughs> that's what they called it. Um, <laughs> It was Jun Akiyama and Kensuke Sasaki against Taco. Wait. Takao. Takao, that makes sense. Takao Mori and Yoshihiro Takayama of No Fear. Um, they were a tag team. Takayama is crazy, man. I just want to say that. I, I also I love the No Fear theme. It's just Takayama's yeah, theme. It's great. It's great. Love it. I don't know. Have, have you seen any of No Fear's All Japan stuff? I, I haven't seen them as a tag team before. I've I've only seen Takayama. Go watch stuff. them versus Ogawa and uh, Misawa for like the uh, Aja and the tag, world tag titles. It's so crazy. They just fucking beat the shit out of them. It's such good. I love them. Also, Takayama's like one of the best wrestlers ever. I just want y'all to know yeah. that. Literally, um, okay. yeah, I've, I've seen very little Omori. Um, Omori's really good. Like, I only recently yeah, got into him because uh, I started watching All Japan like on a regular basis and I really came around on him uh, about last year. He had it was him and Soya challenging. Uh, Ryuki Honda and Shotaro Ashina for the tag titles, and he just went balls to the walls. Like, bro, this dude fucking rocks. No, I'm always cool. Um, even though his whole career is kind of fucked because he decided to call that match early with Shinya Hashimoto and Masao was pissed. <laughs> <laughs> um, three or four of these guys are like three of my favorite wrestlers ever. Jun, Takeyama, Kinsuke, absolutely love them. Uh, also have in my notes, Deep Breath. Take the dream! Shouts out, Kinsuke's got an all-timer thing, bro. It's everything true. about Kinsuke Sasaki rules. Big wife guy, banger theme song. <laughs> There's no way you just said that. Dude, I have yes. that written down. Big, big wife, wife guy. guy, yes! Dude. Kinsuke Sasaki's the <laughs> ultimate wife guy. There's, like, no bigger wife guy ever in wrestling than Kinsuke Sasaki. Maybe in Legit. life. In bold, in bold. I, it, it, <laughs> my last note is closing set, stretch, Kinsuke Omori. Uh, Sasaki won with the Northern Lights bomb. Big, Big wife, wife guy. guy. Yeah. He loves his wife. <laughs> yeah, no. Uh, Kensuke Sasaki, I feel like we most people only know him as uh, Akira Hokuto's wife, but dog, I, yeah, yeah, I love Kensuke Sasaki so much. Like, I can't really rank these three because June really has the unfair advantage because he's still going, so he's still having good matches. Yeah. Uh, but I love all of them, like, pretty equally. I love Kensuke Sasaki so much. Um, Omori and o- Uncle June are firing off already. Uh, this is going to rock. Uh, Uncle June and Omori were actually uh, debut opponents. Uh, oh, really? They won their first set of belts together. They won Aja tag, op- uh, tag belts. At least I'm pretty sure they're debut opponents. I know they won their first sets of tag belts together, but I'm pretty sure they're debut opponents. That's why he was uh, in June's 30th anniversary match, I want to say. Um, also won world tag titles together whenever uh, June came around and started working all Japan again. And he actually gave him where his like first triple crown win too, I think. Um, and then well, you remember how I said that uh, Kanemoto and Nakajima was almost my favorite exchange of the night. Mm. That is because the Sasaki and Takayama exchange is fucking crazy. <laughs> okay. Uh, it went slightly above them for me uh, because they were just going at it. At first, Takayama grabs a sl- a side headlock and i was like what is this big dude doing man don't do this <laughs> and then they just started throwing bombs and i was just at this point i was just in just in awe because i was like god they're really just rocking now this is like one of the this other than that junior match is like the first time of the night where i felt like we truly started getting into that really good category of like in ring work just because not only from their exchange but June and uh, to add in June and Takao doing their shit really really good I think everybody in this match like gave it practically their all because it was a really really good tag match yeah totally um at first I was kind of like okay because just like the vibe it felt like Takayama and Kensuke were like that was the collision you were waiting to see Mm -hmm. um and then after a minute it's like 
No, Amori's killing it. Amori is yeah. like stealing the show. And then Akiyama comes in. A- Akiyama's killing it. He's, and it's just like the entire match. You start realizing it's like all these motherfuckers are killing it. And it's great. Um, one note that I, I took about Takiyama is just his forearms. Not not a lot of times aren't the greatest forearms in wrestling. But no, because you know why? Because those forearms turns into punches in the he face. He just punches them in the throat. Like, yeah. that's what I, I was like. He's just he's just punching dude in the throat. <laughs> like he's not he's not throwing a forearm. He's just he's just straight fisting him, bro. Like that was easy. Um, <laughs> he's just straight. He's just straight punching him in the throat. It's crazy. And I was just like in awe. And I I haven't seen a Takayama match in a minute. And so I was just like, man, I fucking love this guy. Takayama's um, the peak Mel so physique. Good. He this is, is so good. This is the greatest man of all time. Shouts out Yoshiro Takayama. And yeah, just I, overall, really good match. I thought that for someone who, as someone who has not seen Omori, I don't know if I've ever seen a match of his, at least not one day he was featured prominently in, um, I was blown away. I was like, oh, this guy's like, because when you, when you look at this lineup, if you're a bit of a more casual fan of Kuro, yeah, you, you probably are don't. likely to know four of the names, or three of the names, you know yeah. what I mean? Uh, and that was that was the case for me, so I... I was really impressed. I thought Omari. Yeah, I only know uh, Junakiyama from DDT. That's rough. That's rough. I know DDT Balding Yuri Akiyama. Balding your Akiyama, how do you feel? Uh, I don't know. I've never seen this one. Like I said, I only know him from DDT and GCW. That's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, of fifth course, pillar? the but, uh, fifth pillar, who? Uh, can, <laughs> but of course the Kensuke and Jin team won because Kensuke, big wife guy, said, "Yeah, I'm gonna show you something." My wife is watching at home, about to pull out this Northern Lights bomb and get this dub very quick. That's a real, that's that's a real royal family in professional wrestling. Fucking yeah. Akira Hokuto, um, you know Kensuke, adopted Katsu, son Katsu, uh, Rin. daughter-in-law Rin. Uh, yeah, it's just that's just the craziest team you could possibly imagine. That's the craziest family. Mm-hmm. Um, big wife guy Kensuke, shouts out. Uh, yeah, this is a really good match. This was, I think, this was by number two on the show, like firmly, uh, because I thought it was really, really good. I, I loved it a lot. I can't wait to talk about the main event for so many reasons, but I know Dude, we're gonna have to talk no, about this Yano and there's one, match. There's one reason I want to talk about the main event, and it, and he has a very specific name. Um, <laughs> I, yeah, me too. I only <laughs> want to talk about one person that main event too. Like, oh my god, I can't but, wait. Yeah, Match was great. And then after the match, Akiyama helped up Amori. So, uh, <laughs> Takiyama just bolted. The second that the match was over, he just was like, nah, I'm done. He okay, left. I, said, ah, I gotta go. Omori was in the ring. He was, like, selling. And then Akiyama was like, hey, hey, good match. And he hits, shakes his hand, he gets him up, tosses his motherfucker out of the ring. Says, fuck you. <laughs> just like, damn. Shithead, shithead, ew, shithead Akiyama is a legend. This was this was good grabs. This is real grabs right here. Um, and he can talk to cats. Did you know that? I did not. He's actually. a cat whisperer. He has a YouTube channel about it. That's incredible. That's actually incredible. Um, apparently, the next match uh, is meant to make you believe the power of pro wrestling. That's the tag. <laughs> Show as hell made me hate pro wrestling. So good. <laughs> it is Keiji Muto and Kenta Kobashi against Iska, uh, Takashi Iska, that is, and Toru Yano. Of, uh, Yano uh, and Iska were New Japan's Chaos. big heel tag team. Uh, yeah. I've avoided this era of Yano on purpose. For years, yeah, um, you should. Um, yeah. <laughs> so basically, my notes are pretty much what we have talked about this whole show. I literally just said this match is carried actively by the aspect of Muto and Kobashi teamingly, t- teamingly teaming up. Uh, for the most part, it's pretty mid. Iska and Yano are just not a good tag team, no. uh, at least not at this stage. Uh, God, Kobashi and Muto are so cool. That's literally all I have. <laughs> I, I will say I really like this era of Muto. Like I love the, just I love the shining. Like I don't know why, but when I was younger, I I didn't... love all eras of Keiji Muto. That's, That's my favorite grifter politician yes. ever. <laughs> but I was never like I was never a big Muto guy. Like that was never like my Muto. Oh, you like the bald one? Okay. Oh, I love the shining wizard, bro. I love. No, I like the bald one more than I like Muda too. That's fine. Like that, that, and that's always kind of been my my thing. Is that's like, uh, you know, old man Mudo, before he got like really bad to where like he couldn't really move. That like that wrestle one, <laughs> like early wrestle one Mudo is like what I kind of like grew up on when it can't when it comes to Mudo. So uh, I liked this era of Mudo. He did like a little bit because you know he got like thirty seconds of shine 
outside of the 12 minutes of Yato and Iska heat. Um, so that was fun. Like, I liked that little movie. I love, okay, I will say I the... loved the ending of him and Kobashi just being bros and, like, trying to one-up oh, yeah. each other. Oh, it was great. I mean, legit. So this match, it was 15 minutes. It was 1450-something, yeah. right? Okay, um, look, it's not a good match. Go ahead. Not, it's not a good <laughs> match at all. However, if you watched it, by the end of it, you will go, I had a good time because Muto and yes. Kobashi are so cool. Yes, and that's funny because, like, it's 15 minutes, and 13 of those minutes is just them getting beat up. I don't know how I can explain it. I don't know who's somebody I can use as a comparison. Literally, the second, like, the second that, like, got to, like, okay, there's, like, a minute and a half left, they're like, okay, let's get to the finish. They stood up and just started kicking ass. Mm -hmm. And those, 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 like, that minute and a half was so killer, but it was preceded by 13 and a half minutes of dog shit, I would say, for the most part. Yeah, I don't. I was trying to find a comparison that w- would make sense, but I I really can't because literally, not a good match. But by the end of it, you're like, ha, huh, I had fun. That specific wrestling. The novelty, team was so cool. the novelty of Kabashi and Mudo definitely yeah. was there. Like it definitely aided the match. Um, yeah. Made it not as shit, but it was still a, a, quite a bad match. Um, yeah. hey, hey, that's whatever. You know, pro wrestling love. Shouts out Ikazo. All that. Uh, let's get to this main event because I got to talk. So I'm going to talk about somebody. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so the main event is called All Together Now. Uh, you know what? Let me do this. Let me. Yeah, you know. Let me do this. All you. Me. All right. So we got All Together Now because we ran out of names. Uh, <laughs> this is the three champions: the GHC champion Go Shiozaki, the IWGP Heavyweight Champion Hiroshi Tanahashi, and the Triple Crown Champion Suwama teaming up. Uh, I wish it was Tanaguchi. That'd be beast. So beast. Um, there they were taking on representatives from all Japan, Noah and New Japan. Uh, Noah, of course, represented by basketball shorts Takashi Sakira, who Based. had uh, Noah's best match ever with Yoshiro Takayama in these basketball shorts, um, as well as New Japan Shinsuke Nakamura, who hasn't reached that level to where he's the best wrestler in the world, but he's like starting to find his character groove just a little bit. You're, you're starting to see. Yeah. The foundation of what Shinsuke would become before he goes it's off it took to that long. do forward roles in the performance center. So, <laughs> well, because he didn't really figure it out, so he went to Mexico. and was like, "Dog, Michael Jackson is so fucking sick." That's true. That's true. Um, and all Japan is represented by Big Match Kenzo Suzuki. I know that's right, bro. Bro, Kenzo <laughs> Suzuki came out to the Tokyo Drift theme from Fast and Furious. And I they know they dubbed this. over it. They dubbed yeah, but, over it, but no, you, you can, can hear it. it. There's you no can way hear you can, it. <laughs> yeah, you can hear it. Not only that, and I know this not be, because of this match. So, Kenzo Suzuki now works for like a TV network, and he was partnered up with Lek, who is the like sponge salesman who like funds Puro and like saves the entire yeah, scene. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And Kenzo Suzuki just showed up on a Dragon Gate show and took off his shirt. <laughs> and I don't know why. And it was that song. I was like, what the heck is this, man? Uh, Kenzo Suzuki, bro. Y'all have, have to entire, watch this match. I have an entire section just about him. No, y'all have to watch <laughs> this. Okay. Let me get through the notes I did write down so I can tell y'all what I actually think. Okay. So I said, All Japan can't rise back up until they bring back the three belts, which is true. That aesthetically Dude, is just a oh, more 100%, pleasing thing. 100% need all three belts. That was my first note, was that Suwama looks so much cooler that he has three belts. Yeah. And they refurbished them. Like, they, the belts are not, like, they, they look They belong good. to the Baba fam, family, uh, but the thing sense. is, they could, like, make their own if they really wanted to. Or, like, some company, just do some version of the Triple Crown and, like, with some old school style belt. Because, like, this is such a cool look. You like... Honestly, I think the IWGP heavyweight is like more visually like, you know, fancy for some people, but I think yeah. the Triple Crown looks the best. It just looks the most prestigious cuz you got three of these bitches. Um I, I said they made I said this match is so fucking hilarious. They make Kenso look like a goober. Sugira's having a beast performance against the champion team. He's literally like the MVP for his team. Uh I think Nakamura does well here, but Sugira is just firing at anybody who stands in his way. It's great. Kenzo is getting jumped by his own teammates. This match is fun. Okay, I need to tell y'all, y'all have to watch this match. This this almost was my match of the night, and I'm not even joking, because Kenzo thinks he's the biggest star of all time, <laughs> and for what it's worth, he's, like, very over. Like, he's having dueling duel chance with Tanahashi at one point. He's, like, very over, and it's crazy, because he's, like, the worst wrestler in this match by far. But, like, 
he thinks he's like this big mega star and his shit doesn't stink the way he carries himself y'all have to watch this this dude's an enigma he should have been triple crown champion he should have got brought back to new japan he should have been iwgp heavyweight champion and then he should have went to noah and became gac heavyweight champion this dude is a legend this they don't make wrestlers like this anymore no this is what yoshi tatsu does now but taken to a whole nother level when you come back yeah. to wwe and think you're a god and way bigger than you actually are except for yoshi tatsu and he like can't even try to make himself look bigger because he's just such a goober kenzo actually carries himself like he's god like he's a superstar like he's the rock or something like i can't explain it you have to watch this this dude if I'm in, if we do MVPs on the night, Kenso is my MVP for this night. <laughs> oh, 100%. legit! I almost wrote down most fucked fucker, Kenso. Like that's like like he needed his own. The award. thing is, need, no, he's in, a, he's in a world of his own. The thing about this match is, is like the match when the others get involved is like really good. Like I said, Sugira is like throwing bombs at the champion team, but like you can't even remember that by the end of this because Kenso is so crazy. <laughs> this dude's like a lunatic man like he's gonna forever be the highlight of this match just because first of all how crazy he got like dueling chance with tanahashi that's insane second how he like fed into it and felt like he was the biggest star ever and how he got jumped because he was like being an asshole to his teammates i need to take you guys through the way i saw this match please, right the way that please, this went down for please me. do um so his name is not kenzo suzuki in this. It's Kenso. It's Kenso. And he doesn't look like he did during his WWE run. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. So I was watching this and I was like, oh yeah, I know five of these guys. Who the fuck's Kenso? And then he comes out to Tokyo Drift. Don't, don't worry, I got us. I can hear it. Don't worry, I got us. No, yeah, I keep talking. I'm going to just play it. Go ahead. You don't have to play Tokyo Drift. We're going to play it. <laughs> we going to get, get. Oh, like, wait, no. We'll probably get like out. taken down. Yeah. Never mind. <laughs> we can't do that. Play it, but you, you know the song. You know the song. You know the song. Um, he comes out of Tokyo Drift. I was like, that's a choice. Okay, that's dope. And then, like, as the match continued, I, like, at one point, I just wrote down, what is this dude's deal? <laughs> <laughs> like, like, the, like, in a minute, like, the first minute of the match, like, they they get, I think it was Sugira. They tossed Sugira into the corner, whoever was in. I think it was, I think Go Shiozaki, or Nakamura threw, uh, threw, threw Sugira into the corner. Maybe the other way around. I don't know. And Kenzo just, like, fell off the apron unprompted and played dead? Like, didn't, he didn't sell. He just played dead for some reason because <laughs> he didn't want to get tagged in. Um, he, yeah, he was just, like, doing this, like, shtick where he was just like, yeah, I'm, I'm better than everybody. What you know about it? You know what I mean? And then I was like, I need to figure out who the fuck this guy is because, like, obviously it's something. Like, And then I check, and I was like, this is former WWE tag team champion Kenzo Suzuki. How do you know? How do you know it's th- bro? Come on, there's no way you're looking at this guy and can't tell it's him. I didn't, not whatsoever. I I could not f- like I was like, huh? And then I looked at him. I was like, I guess that makes sense, but that's crazy. And then the thing was, was that commentary kept saying WWE. Uh, so I was like, because okay. he's a WWE superstar. Yeah. Come on, um, world famous, bizarre guy, just a bizarre. guy guy he was wrestling in his own world for a lot of this match he did do one of my favorite spots which was um everybody was outside of the ring including him and tanahashi was on one corner and he was on like the adjacent adjacent no no and he he ran from that corner got up onto the apron and just dived and i was like why does nobody do that that's crazy. <laughs> That's a no, crazy my spot. favorite spot of this match is everybody is outside the ring. They're they're making the pile because y'all know what's coming. Y'all, y'all, a lot oh, of y'all yeah. are AEW fans. Y'all, oh, y'all, yeah. know, y'all know what's coming. You know, you know, you know about the pile, and then you do the dive. Kenso gets in the ring. He's getting the crowd hyped up. He's feeling himself. He's like the Rock, bro. He's over here. He's he runs off the ropes. He goes to dive. Everybody, including his partners, move out the way, and he just eats shit on the floor. <laughs> and, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> nobody caught him like to the point where like everybody like everybody stopped fighting and moved out of the way <laughs> and then immediately after he hit the floor everybody went back to beefing <laughs> yeah yeah um this, this match was everybody against kenzo that was the point and you notice it when at some point him and nakamura are doing a double team and kenzo's just like man fuck you just slaps the piss out of him i just hit my mic because i'm getting so hyped slaps the piss out of him and nakamura's like what are you doing right now <laughs> 
And then Sugira comes in and he's like, hey, you gotta stop, man. And then he starts slapping Sugira. Sugira's like, nah, we don't work like that here. And they both just start beating the fuck out of him. Um, and then they, like, you know, get dispatched. And then all three of the champions get in, surround Kenso, and hit all of their finishes. Lastly, it was Tanahashi who hit the high five flow to win the match after 22 minutes. That's not oh. even the craziest part about this match, man. No, there's so there's more. I there's so more. I okay, I finished this match and I was just like, all right, that's cool. You know, I, I'll I'll be ready to record in the morning. Cool. Dylan texts me as I'm at work, and he just goes, "I don't know if you've seen, because like if you just watch the match on YouTube, it doesn't have the post match stuff. It's so like I don't know if you've seen this, but you should probably watch it." And I was just like, "All right, I guess." So. I get up this morning to do it because I was I didn't watch it last night. I was tired. This ending ceremony is the most insane. Just when I thought we couldn't get any crazier than whatever Kenso just did. Go, Suwama, Tanahashi, they're celebrating. And then just these random artists get in the ring and they just start having a live performance. And I don't know what to make of this. I'm like, okay. It's cool. And then everybody starts coming out in their all together shirts. They like just have an impromptu festival. <laughs> yeah. And dude, and like they hand the mic to like Yuji Nagata. <laughs> yeah. Yuji Nagata's been a spit, bro. You don't know. Oh, uh, I uh, listen for all together again. I need them to invite all my favorite uh, J rappers. I need Zebra on here, King Girdara. Who uh, sings the eruption song? I need them to come out after the main event <laughs> when Kazushko Okada is getting ready to do his little thing. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Uh, so wait, yeah. do you, wait. Do you think do you think Okada's winning? Dude, he's gonna pack and smoke Kaito Kiyomiya <laughs> again. He's gonna he's gonna money clip him, and w- th- nobody's gonna be able to stop it. It's over. <laughs> Oh my days! Yeah, um, I loved it. The post match was phenomenal. Um, this okay. If you want so to take, fun. okay, all right, I'll get my show rating in a minute. But I just want y'all to understand that there wasn't a lot of high level wrestling on the show. No. However, <laughs> there's a lot of things that make it entertaining that raises it up just a bit. Okay. Yeah, and and one one more note about the main event. I will say, uh, Suwama and Sugiera and Nakamura and Shiozaki killer pairings they did really mm. well but they were completely overshadowed by kenso and just kenso doing kenso and kenso. tanahashi but realistically just kenso being kenso. it was just kenso it was just kenso um but yeah that that was a solid match and like outside of just the the, the like uncanniness of there's it, a lot of pairings in the match in like the full matches yeah. aren't going to be blow away other than that one tag match that we mentioned with no fear and uh uh the big wife tag, Dasasaki yeah. and Akiyama and the yeah, big yeah. Uh, junior carnival thing and the opener because it was super short. However, there's a lot of pairings in the matches that you can seek out, uh, except for the for uh, sure. Takuma Sano match because he sucks. Um, and there's a lot of pairings you can just point out and just go, okay, this is really good, even if the match isn't, you know, cooking, cooking. But like, that, I just want you to understand that. Like, there's not a lot of high level wrestling. And that's just how most collab shows are. Yeah, like Muta, the Muta retirement show is going to be the best collaboration show we've ever seen for quite a while because there was actual high level wrestling and politics were on the table, but they were able to coexist to send off Muto. Because that was like, a really good show. Yeah, like we'll probably never get a sh- another show like that until like some big another big legend retires, you know, uh, that's on the level of a Muto or something. Um, but like, this is just insane. Just an insane show that y'all just have to see for yourself. Hopefully, I will say, yeah. for it being four plus hours and it there being no stakes, it being all politics, like it's this should have been way worse. It yeah, should have been 100%. way worse to watch. One uh, hundred. I, I enjoyed myself. You know, like even even the weaker matches, it's like okay, you can't forget about it. There's uh, matches. Some like, of it's just fucking hilarious. This show is like there's a lot of politics at play, but we don't necessarily see it yeah. like often like it's not visible to us uh because like for the most part i feel like everybody shared wins like i've seen new japan guys get pinned on here i've seen noah guys get pinned on here all japan guys get pinned on here it was pretty shared and they were like relatively pushed guys too so um you want you want to know something hmm. uh <laughs> the only the only crew to have more than one representative and ne- none of them getting pinned 
Kensuke office. That's Shout true. Because DDT out. only had one. Um, Pancras only had one. I think it was Suzuki. You know, like there, there were a couple like outside groups that had like one person on the show. Only, only crew to have more than one person and not take a single pin. Kensuke office. Best yep. family in wrestling. Well, you know about that. Yep, that's true. Uh, cause Kajawara and no, Miyahar got pinned. Miyahar got pinned in the Battle Royal. Oh, fuck. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, sucks to suck. I don't know if Kajawara got pinned or got tossed over the top rope, but I know Gato pinned Kento Miyahara. So, no. It's so, um, but yeah, there, there was a lot of fun stuff here. Like, I recommend before, like, even after you watch the All Together Again show, please go watch like the first two. Uh, because I haven't seen the full second one, but uh, the full second one looks a lot better, like on paper, than this first one does. But I don't even know if that main event's going to top this one just because. But it's also in Sendai. So yeah. Nice. Yeah. Um, I don't know if anything will top this main event because Kinso is the greatest wrestler of all time. So uh, go ahead. Worst match of the night. Uh, um, you go ahead. You go ahead. See, it's a toss up between the Battle Royal and the Takuma Sano match just because I didn't enjoy it. Uh, but I'll probably give the edge to the Battle Royal. Um, although if Muto and Kobashi were not in that semi-main, it definitely would have been that. But it's just like, like I said, it's just the aspect and or because like the crowd were eating every little thing they did up of Kobashi and Muto together uh, that makes it just enjoyable. So, see. And then, Oh man, for worst but worst match of the night, I had it as the over the border tag match, because mm-hmm. um, I just didn't like. I I feel like it was in a <laughs> way a it hater. was similar, in a, a but hater. in a way it was it was similar to the semi main event to the point where I think it would have been better if they swapped the tag teams because uh-huh. then then the over the border match would have just been like straight up bad and like funny bad if Yano and Iska against Goto and uh, uh, Tayo, that sounds no, it's god fun. awful. That you, sounds god awful. I mean, you can call this bad. match bad if you want to, because like Evil will listen to this and then he'll call Tokyo Sports and be like, "You remember that one shitty match Hiroki Goto had at All Together One?" <laughs> <laughs> I got a tip off. You remember that one? Oh, <laughs> um, but yeah, I, I just thought I was, like looking back at it, like the other ones had something to them that like the Boyle Royal was bad, but it was funny bad. Like it was like camp type of thing where it's like, "Oh, this is like the worst thing I've ever seen." I love it. Um, same to some degree with, like, you can't call a Kento Kabashi uh, Muto team up as, like, the worst match on any card. I think but just the novelty. I just want everybody to know that. Dylan is purposely advocating for more stardom rumbles. So I just want to put that uh, out there. No. You know what? I actually got really upset on the most recent episode of Stardom Quest because they announced another rumble, but, like, has stakes. And I was like, this shit sucks. Why are we here? They should have bring in Kenzo. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Kenzo should win, enter the five star, win that shit. Kenzo versus Tam Nakano. We get year. Tokyo Drift at the end of the year. And... I want name it Fado. Okay. Um. Yeah, I just thought uh, the over the border tag was just it okay. didn't have it didn't have anything redeemable about it. Was the issue there wasn't yeah. like a, a something that grabbed me. From okay. It, so yeah. So for match of the night, I just want to give my top three because like they were That's all fair. like neck and neck, and so I had to sit back and was like, okay, this was actually the truly great match of the show in my opinion. So, uh, like, okay, I'm not going to tell you who's third. I'm going to say that the main event and the One Night Junior Carnival uh, tied because I don't understand. Kenzo had – y'all just don't understand. Y'all have to watch. Kenzo had a generational performance here, for better or for worse, and it put them on par with the One Night Junior Carnival because of, outside of his performance, the, like, wrestling was really good. Don't get me wrong. Even if, like, uh, Go hadn't quite found himself at this point, he was still, like, good in here with uh nakamura um i think go was killing it for sure i still don't think he found himself it seemed like he was more like kobashi light at this point instead of Mm. go shiozaki himself uh he would you know he'll get there but like you know this is still like early on in his career relatively early on um and the one night junior carnival like we said just absolute a blast uh Shots out Junior Stars and No Limit, or not No Limit, uh, No Mercy. No, shots out them too. Uh, but No Mercy and uh, Junior Stars, I thought they were like a perfect team. Um, the other team was also good, even though uh, Prince Devitt was like the worst wrestler in the match and he didn't need the pin, which is, I guess, fine. I mean, whatever. Uh, but of course, uh, my match of the night is uh, No Fear, Go Ahead, uh, Tokawa Moe, Yoshihiro Takayama versus Junaki Aba and Kensuke Sasaki. 
Uh, just because if you're looking for a definitive great match from the show, it's going to be that. That's fair. Um, I, I ended up pretty much just sticking with Junior Carnival, uh, the, the big tag. Uh, just because I, I think, like I said, the No Fear tag is definitely like a close two. You know what I mean? Like the, those were the two, in my opinion, great matches of the show. Mm-hmm. Um, there's some good matches, obviously, but that, those are like the two like, oh, these are matches that I think anybody should watch, not just for the novelty or not just for, you know, the hindsight and all that. I just think they are two really great matches. Um, main event was also really good. But above all, it was the Junior Carnival with no mercy. Um, yeah, I, it, it, to the point where, like, I want to go seek out some of that no mercy run from, you know, Kenta and Nobu. Because I feel like that's my type of wrestling. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, that, that's my type of shit right there. Um, so, yeah, that was definitely my match of the night. <laughs> But overall, they had there were some high end matches on the show for sure. Okay, so rating, I have to think a little bit about this. Uh, yeah, I didn't, I didn't write mine down yet. I, um, we should come to a we should come to a consensus on it though. I feel like we should we should have have some type of agreement. Okay, that's so fair. we can. I think that's a, fair. A, official rating. Um. Okay, so I I probably would have had it around like a seven on the first watch, but after reliving some of it and like talking about it, I'm like, this ma- this show is like actually exceeded expectations. Like neither way, I'm not going to say it's a bad show because it's for a good cause. And, you know, it was a very disastrous thing that happened around the time. Um, I feel like anywhere between eight and 8.5 is reasonable. Because I would, I would, I would say 7.5. So I think we, I, I would say eight. Eight's yeah, available. I think eight's reasonable because it wasn't like great, but it wasn't bad. And it, like I said, it was a lot more enjoyable than it looks like on paper. Uh, so what would you say, like a like a B plus for a letter grade? Yeah, letter grade probably B plus. Um, yeah, did a good job on it. Um, I have nothing to say other than Ken Kenso based God. Um. But we do have a set up for what our next one's going to be. We're thinking with this series, just do like two a month because we have other podcast stuff we have to. Yeah. You know, yeah. I, since since we're this, this is the first episode, we're kind of just playing it by ear. Um, yeah. You know, schedule wise, especially because yeah. there is a it'll lot. Be a lot of it'll be a lot more fleshed out and refined for episode two. This is more so us figuring out what works, what doesn't work. And no, I we're shooting a pilot. Yeah. We're shooting a yeah. pilot. Yeah, basically. Uh, it'll be a lot more fine. And of course, after that second episode, which I'll tell you what we're going to watch then uh, uh, here in a second. Um, but uh, after that second episode, we're going to start, you know, getting in guests and having them, you know, pick shows and all that good shit. But yeah. like, um, but uh, for the second episode is a show that I picked and I'll tell you why I picked it whenever we get to it, but it's going to be the Ar- RCN. I butcher that all the time, but I think that's Argeon. right. All right, yeah, Argeon. Uh, ARS Tournament 1998. Uh, I want to watch Argeon or Argeon. I, you know, braces are, are the worst thing ever. Um, I've wanted to watch a lot more of it, but I just haven't had a reason to. And, yeah. you know, with yeah. my schedule, I'm just like, I can't really fit any of it in <laughs> unless I have that- a purpose. That's a big part of why I why I kind of pitched the show is that it's like I had victory through guts and that was like where I would get all of my classic jo- my classic Joshi watching and you know that you know ended up just kind of falling off just because I dropped the ball on it can't blame Alex it was it was mostly me but a big part of me just wanted to you know have we a, can blame Alex that's watch. fine I'm not I'm not opposed but a big part of me just wanted to like have a reason to go watch these these old shows and you know just have fun talking about it so yeah Arjan is definitely up my alley it's exactly mm-hmm. the type of thing that uh we wanted it's an show. Asha Kong run fed where Mariko Yoshida was the god yes. like this is the greatest company of all time so I'm in for it and just be and I'm not going to spoil the card or anything for you. you can look it up if you want to it's on YouTube if you want to watch it before we do um so you can kind of gather your own thoughts on it uh it's a crazy lineup with like some real like if you go through each round of the tournament, you're like, God, I didn't expect this person to make it as far as they did. <laughs> um, uh, but uh, basically, yeah, once we start getting guests on, that's where it'll get more fun. Like I said, it's more like a wrestling book club type of thing because we want to see what show they bring, why they brought it. You know, just you know, shoot the shit, talk about it. Um, 
like I said, don't understand how we got this show because I just don't know. We're probably like the two worst people possible to co-host a show on this. Oh, 100%. We, we just talked over each other for two hours, my brother. It was great. <laughs> it was legendary. But also, but, we have. I mean, hey, you know, it is what it is. But also, it's the most fitting because most of the time when me and Dylan record, there's a third person, usually Scott or Alex, that you know, kind of balances everything out. With this, this is our show, so we can do whatever we want. <laughs> um, this is true. This is true. But as always, um, you know, if we got anything to plug, of course, everything we got to plug is practically on the network. I'm like the only person that's got stuff to plug that isn't on the network. So go ahead with. I, no, I'll go ahead yeah. with my plug since you know your stuff's on the network, and I'll just you know. Uh, so yeah, I have the uh, Start Express podcast. It's where me and my friend Beth we talk about wrestling, even though her knee hurt now. Uh, so uh, we'll get back to that whenever. R.I.P. R. Beth knee. Yeah, whenever. <laughs> that sucks, man. Uh, <laughs> whenever she gets back, I'm gonna hit her with a dragon screw live on a <laughs> live on recording and. <laughs> Big welcome back <laughs> gift. Uh, but also, Tanahashi welcome. Yeah, but so for now, while she's out, I'm kind of dealing with whatever. But uh, I've kind of got something to occupy my time if I don't want to go record something because I uh, started a monthly Ganbari Pro Wrestling Roundup where you did. it's uh, essentially uh, a Ganbari version of Stardom's Quest. I'm out here watching these fucking house shows, man. And if they keep running Basement <laughs> Monstar three times in a day, I'm going to I'm gonna act up. <laughs> I'm going to act up. Um, <laughs> But uh, that, and uh, of course, me and Dylan have the Best of Black Wrestling series. I have an idea for an ACH article, but I don't know how I want to approach it. So we'll we'll see if I get around to it or refine it, because I'm trying to find a good way to capture everything I want to capture, capture, but also not be on the verge of controversy upon release. <laughs> so, yeah, I get that, I get that. Um, not because of anything I said, because like any, everything that I have in mind for it is pretty factual. It's just you know, wrestling Twitter is it's a worst. it's a subject of yeah uh, it's yeah it's hard and it's a, it's subjects that they probably wouldn't take well. Um, yeah, no, I get that. Also uh, on the Five Star Network, I'm gonna get back into writing here eventually. Uh, I'm probably gonna start a PRJ series. I just don't know how I want to go about it necessarily because they run a lot of shows and i don't really know how i want to go about it uh i'll definitely get back into gone pro uh previews especially old award because we're rocking um this shit looks hype yeah it's, it's gonna be crazy i'm excited shouts out you know Monte and kenoka bookers of the year um that's what i got to oh yeah uh last word of sports pro wrestling sometimes i write about noah and dragon gate depending on how i'm feeling like i said it's hard to get a lot of writing done that's why i've started so many audio projects uh Xavier's cooking Xavier's cooking. I'm trying. He's doing things. I'm trying. I'm trying to get my Unamonase and Ken Oka interview by the end of the year. So no. putting that out there into the universe. All right. Go ahead and plug all your stuff. Mr. Um, Corporate yeah. man. I'm not a what the fuck. Yes, you are. Yeah, You're Mr. Uh, five Star Network, man. Yeah, check out the Five Star <laughs> Network. Uh, that's where most of my uh, passionate writing, I would say, is a lot of my analysis. The most recent one was Sonata, uh, the man at the center of the, the man at the center of it all. Um it's my manifesto on the great Seiya Sonata. I'm really proud of this. Go check that out. Um, I would say I have Stardom Quest. Uh, it's every week, usually on yeah. Thursdays. That's pretty and Alex, popular, I guess. Yeah, a little bit. Um, me and Alex talk shit about, about wrestling, Joshi Wrestling, Stardom specifically. And it's a good if you're time. you're a Sam Nakano fan, you're not going to like the recent episode, yeah, no, but I um, enjoyed it. I had bad. a good time. That's my bad. Sorry. If, you, if you're a Tam Nakano fan, it's it's not really your place to be. But I would love your, I would love you to listen to it anyway. Um, I was gonna say I'd love your opinion, not necessarily, but I would I would love you to listen to it anyway. Um, otherwise, I also write at Last Word. I do the Star on previews for the big pay per views. Um, I write Wrestling Inc. Um, I am not Raj Giri. People seem to get that confused. <laughs> I, I can't confirm more than not that. I'm not, <laughs> but... <laughs> um, different guy, but yeah, all all types of stuff. Um, follow me on Twitter at xxgben because that's where you'll find all my shit. So yeah, any closing remarks or shall I send us off? When you're here in Tokyo, best yeah, yeah. I didn't watch that movie. That should, that should bang. Uh, <laughs> I haven't seen it in a minute. Uh, oh god. Okay. Shout out Kenzo, well, one time. You know what? Shouts out, Kenzo. We'll see y'all in the second episode. Thank you.